Starmasters, it's time once again for the Real People Multi Game Solitaire Mega Tournament, and we are starting a game called Star Masters. This is part of the Protestant leg of the tournament, which um, I've kind of revived. This will be the second time I've revived it against my earlier promises. Um, I said that I would not bring the losers back into it again after the last time. The time before that, I said that Roadrunner was the champion, uh, but then I was like, oh, well, we need to have another one because that just felt too short. Had another one, um, Lefty the Blue Baby won that, and I was going to have Roadrunner versus Lefty the Blue Baby. Um, and now I'm bringing them back again because I came upon a game that I thought would be perfect for this leg, and I didn't really have a perfect game for Lefty the Blue Baby and Roadrunner do one-on-one. -on -one. I was going to have them do some multiplayer thing, but I feel like this is a lot more fitting. And as you heard, um, the previous two games have all had music uh, in the public domain that were attached to them. This, well, the first one wasn't public domain, but I had permission. The second one was public domain. This is also going to be public domain music. I was going to make a soundtrack for it, but I don't have time for that. I barely have time to film. I'm just kind of squeezing in 30 minutes here, 30 minutes there. I might start getting up earlier in the morning so that I can actually um, film this thing and get it going. Um, so, upshot is I'm just going to have to do some improvisational acapella stuff, maybe seeing the moves. I don't really know how it's going to work, but it should be a lot of fun for you. I think you're going to enjoy it. Uh, I would like to talk to you a bit about the game now, Star Masters. So let's take a look. Here we see... Star Masters, for those of you who don't know, is a combination of Mage Knight, and here we see a lot of Mage Knight stuff right there, and Shadow Lord, um, which is a game I wanted for a long time because it has an exclamation point, and I like the name Shadow Lord, and um, someone finally said, hey, I have Shadow Lord, and then I forget if I traded them or what, but I got Shadow Lord. Never actually played Shadow Lord yet. Um, but I have played a little bit of Star Masters just to kind of get some semblance of the rules together prior to filming this because I thought that would be a bit nicer for you all if I wasn't totally starting from scratch. There's probably still going to be some changes made. I don't know. I haven't played it straight through to the end because of time. I don't have a lot of time to play. This is a fairly lengthy game, I think. Um, there's a lot to do on a turn, and so... I didn't have time to do a full game, um, just did a few turns just to kind of see, to get into a, a shape that I like. Um, so let me talk about a little bit about what it's going to be like and then I'll probably have to stop and then maybe we'll start playing later tonight or else tomorrow morning. I don't think I'll probably say what time of day it is throughout filming. I'll probably just film here and there, but if my, my timber sounds drastically different in between takes, um, in between the times when the camera stops and starts, you can surmise that perhaps some length of time has passed and, you know, the real world has intruded upon our place. Um, although, generally, you know, I have biology and that's, uh, that's uh, external to this world, too. So, let's see. So, here we have Smiley back. Smiley back here. She's Firemaster, and Firemaster is kind of one of the keys to why these games fit so well. There's a, a lot of reasons why Mage Knight and, Sh and Shadow Lord are natural uh, compadres, but the, the Fire Chick, the fact that both games have a Fire Chick, um, if you don't know Mage Knight, here's the Fire Chick from Mage Knight. She's going to be covered up because Shadow Lord has a lot better artwork than Mage Knight, and it is a lot more fun to look at. So. You can see she has this fellow here. This is Deems. This is her starting diplomat. Um, this is Axel. This is Smiley's starting um, warrior. There's a third type of character in um, Shadow Lord, and that is a merchant. 
And a merchant, I'll get an example from here. No one starts with a merchant. Merchants are also great to have. You kind of, they kind of, you know, they all have their advantages, the merchants, the warriors, and the um, diplomats. Here's a merchant, Elaine here. See, she has a three. So anytime you see a three, unless it's a shadow, which are these things right here, that means it's going to be a merchant. If it's a six, that's a warrior. A zero is a diplomat. And those, those refer to um, battle scores and shadow lord. I'm not going to be using those numbers, but they're still useful in, for um, identification purposes. So um, what are, what's the difference between these three? Uh, diplomats are what you use to recruit new characters. Uh, warriors are the best at fighting. So if you know Mage Knight, I'm using, I'm adding the um, elite units to the warrior. So Axel, he's not ice golems, but he has four armor, resistant to fighting and ice, and he has these abilities. Okay. Um, diplomats never fight. I, I'm pretty sure. I, I, I uh, again, haven't played Shadow Lord, but it seems like whenever they're in a space, a fight doesn't happen unless there's another diplomat that cancels them out, but I didn't, it didn't seem like the diplomat entered the fight even then. So I'm not bothered any, um, any uh, stuff there. But notice the lovely detail on here. Deems is one I really like because uh, he has a little mallet, and that, you know, that speaks to a world beyond this game because there's no mallets in this game. Um, and then merchants, they are, they can fight too, but they're not as strong. They're like half as strong, so I'm reflecting that by using these standard units instead of uh, cards for the merchants, instead of the special units, which are the gold-backed cards. Um, the standard units are not as good, but merchants, the more merchants you have, the more spaceships you have, and spaceships are important. So here we have the Firemaster Power Disc, the power ring, and that's Smiley's there. And she can or cannot put spaceships in there. This is a spaceship. Uh, they can each hold up to six spaceships. A spaceship in Shadow Lord is necessary to move, and it also adds to your uh, number when fighting. Um, so in this case, it's going to help you move. It's going to be kind of like a, it's going to add a generic move attribute. The more spaceships you have, but you can also use it. For those familiar with Mage Knight, as like a sideways turned card, that means it can add um, one to, well, not totally, I'm, I don't think it's, I'm gonna, I haven't decided if I'm going to let spaceships add to influence, but they can add to attack or defense in combat. So they're pretty good to have spaceships. So it's great to have a merchant. That's the main way you're going to get spaceships. I think there might be another way, but I think I was just going to have it be merchants and these star bases. Let's see, three for each. Oh, you can discard a card for its number in spaceships. I'm going to take that out because we're not using these cards really, except for um, certain randomizers, these Shadow Lord cards. They're just cards with numbers. They look kind of like, um, what's that game that has cards like these? I want to say Skipbo. Are these like Skipbo cards? Has anyone ever played that game? Um, so there's a little Skipbo deck that you use for things. What else can I tell you about um, Star Masters? Probably more Shadow Lord. I, I suspect more people are familiar with Mage Knight than Shadow Lord. It's a fairly popular game. Um, oh, movement. So you're gonna, they're going to be moving around these things. Uh, how movement works is say, I keep the, I keep their their own ring, the Fire Master ring, on their Fire Master card so that we can use the little figure, the the Fire Chick, um, who is a lot. Well, she's not. So yeah, she has her underwear showing. And if you notice. This guy doesn't have his underwear showing, and he's a diplomat. You'd think he'd have his underwear showing. This guy has like nothing showing. Okay, this guy is a dragon, and he is topless. And I don't know, maybe he has long underwear. I <laughs> get it, <laughs> um, but it's he's not really. I guess he's showing some legs. So the dragon and the fire chick are the most scantily clad in this world. And I wonder if that's that's the same in the pictures. Let's take a look at some of the pictures. Sorry, I'm taking a side trip into feminism here. Yeah, yeah, cloaked. See some neck there. This vine has some neck. I don't know. I don't know. Whoa, I'm going on a tangent. Okay, so they can move around, but when they're moving to a place, so say 
I actually let the first move be free. They don't have to do anything. They can move from here to here free. Um, and then, say if she wants to move from here to here, she has to first draw a, a chip from this bag here. Uh, my wife made me this bag. It has fish on it. And it's going to go face up there. And then that is going to have some information. Um, in this case, they could fight this person uh, who is a dragon. Probably wouldn't want to this early in the game. These are, I think, the strongest monsters. Or you could um, pay... Oh, so in order to go there, you have to pay the movement cost of the terrain. Each of these chips has a terrain cost. So I think this one is the wasteland, so they'd have to get five total move to, to, to complete the move. So it costs one to draw the chip, and then they have to get five, four more then, if they wanted to move there. And then they could move to whatever the special feature is of the area. So, the, the, so each chip kind of has three, three um, purposes. One, there's a monster you can fight, which is useful for making levels, which is useful because of the purpose of the game, and I'll, or the, the goal of the game, and I'll, I guess I should get to that. Um, two, the backside is a location that they can go to, and that doesn't look like anything to you, but it's written down on my notepad here that this is a magical glade, so they could... They could spend four to move here, and then another five to move to the Magical Glade. They could, or they could fight the monster and just be at the Magical Glade. Or um, they could continue past it by spending another one movement. Um, and so it's, it's a monster, it's a location, and it's also uh, a terrain for purposes of movement. And so that's, that's basically what's going on there. Um, you can control areas. If you control both sides of an area, you can just move right past without having to draw a chit. Um, what else? Blurgy, burk, burk, beep, burk, burk. I shouldn't tell you everything. Um, these little circles here, only diplomats can turn those over unless you don't have a diplomat. And those are most likely new recruits who, if you land there, they will join your cause. Um, and it's going to be either, either a diplomat, a warrior, or a merchant, and, or it could be something that says that one of these shadows attacks, and then you can decide where the shadow attacks. You can also, every turn, move one of the shadows, and I always forget to do this in my play test. Um, you can just move them around. Uh, the hitch with that is if you have to have at least one other person agree with the move, okay? So say Smiley moved and she wanted to move the Shadow Lord, who's the strongest one, somewhere here, because they can only move one space, or here, here, she probably move far away from her. Um, everyone else would say whether they agree. If no one agrees, then the move doesn't happen. Um, so you can draw these, and it, it causes them to do a sneak attack, which they just kind of appear somewhere, um, if, it's, if it says so-and-so attacks. And so the goal is, you see this, the Shadow Lord, he's got spa spaceships aplenty. He starts with five, but he also has a Power Stone. The goal is not to get the Power Stone, but the Power Stone is a great artifact. Um, it's, I think, to get the Power Stone and then kill everyone else. Or, or you can kill people and then get the Power Stone. Be, get the Power Stone and be the last one surviving. So it's sort of a... The group has a time limit in which to get a Power Stone. If no one gets the Power Stone by the end of that time limit, everyone loses. Um, but So it's a case where every, either everyone can lose or there can be a single winner. So it's like semi-cooperative in a way. And that's probably enough talking. I probably bored you to tears. I apologize for that. Um, do -do 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 -do! Star Masters! Let's turn to a more interesting subject. Let's talk about character selection. How did I decide who was going to be what? Well, obviously, Lefty had to be the blue baby here, so he got to be Water Master. Um, by doing that, I had to make... Roadrunner be the Earth Master over here. Um, the reason being is they both have one win under their belt. They um, they have more of an incentive to take out the other one in a way, um, and they're also more of a target maybe to the other two because the other two they need to get a win to keep going. So basically, how this works tournament wise is if Roadrunner or Lefty win. Um, this leg is done, and I'm not doing any more for it. I won't bring them back. I promise, I promise, I promise. I think I've said that before, but I won't have a reason to, because one of them will have two wins. Um, so after have, having done that, I had, you know, 
I figured who's going to be the fire chick, probably Smiley, though I guess Bix Beetleman might. He might also be uncomfortable with that. So that left Bix as the air master. So it was, it was all pretty simple. Um, they did choose, I think they chose their people. So that they don't have any, you know, a, all the warriors are the same in Shadow Lord. They're different in this because they get a random draw of cards. So they didn't choose their, their, their extra cards. Um, so you can just kind of see what sort of person they would like to hang out with. There, there, and there. And then, you know, it was fairly simple to match up um, the Mage Knight characters with their component or their, um, with the Shadow Lord characters, like that. Very simple. Also had them choose their, uh, their starting cards, their, their turn order cards from Mage Knight. Roadrunner went with the Great Start. Uh, Lefty went with the Man of Steel. Bix Beetleman went with the right moment. I thought that was perfect for him. And then planning for smiling. There's some unnecessary detail for you. Let's do some more explaining. Who wants to play a game? I'll just explain everything. Um, these are dice. Uh, this makes up the mana pool people can draw from one of these a turn. And how this game works, this is a little different. So, um, they can, uh, it's different Star Master, and the Earth Master, Fire Master, Water Master, and Air Master are each Star Masters. Those are the main characters. If you your Star Master dies or get captures in this game, gets captured in this game, you lose. I don't think there's any death in this game. It's just getting captured, kind of like Pokemon. Um, they can they can control areas, right? And they control areas. This is another use of spaceships by ha leaving a spaceship there. So say. Um, our fire master here, our fire master example lady is right there. She moves here. She wants to control that area. She can drop a spaceship there, and that just marks that she controls it. She loses loses some strength, loses some mobility, but she gets another another space. And there's some benefits to that. One, you can move straight through areas that you have controlled. Otherwise, you have to stop. So if she had enough movement to move from here to here, for example, and she wanted to do that for some strategic reason, she would have to stop here if she, unless she had it controlled. Now, I'm, I'm adding another little bit to that. If you're linked to one of your people, say Axel's over here, and she has somehow gotten control of this right here, uh, and he's in a fight, she can play cards on his behalf, kind of like sending this mass, magical stellar beam to Axel to help him out. She can also, if there's that connection, Axel can use, um, you know, Axel can be the one to use the, the mana or the energy to power his, like if he want, need, really needs to use his ice attack, she can send him this wild die in order to help him uh, do that. Now that would be her use of that die for the turn, you know, and any cards she plays on his behalf, you know, that's in the discard pile and that's one that her uh, star master can't use. So that's going to be fun to explore, I think, that element. Um, I'm really interested in that, you know, kind of, that, that gives me some like different strategic pathways to follow a uh, new area to su explore rather than, I mean, the deck building, I, I, there, there's some personality in that, you know, what sort of, you know, some people aren't going to pick Blood Rage. Blood Rage takes a certain kind of player. Ice Bolt versus Swift Bolt, I don't know. I guess you might like aesthetically one over the other. Um, so, what else? Du -du 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 -du. This it just says what the different ter terrain co movement costs are. They're different between day and night. Um, these are the turn order cards. You know, in general, the earlier in the turn order you are, the weaker the the attendant power. Each of the turn orders has a power that goes with it. At night, there's a different set of powers. These are people you can recruit, and. Normally it goes straight across, but I had to go down for space reasons so that Roadrunner can have a lot of room. They're going to get up to eight guys um, beyond their Star Master, so this is going to get pretty full. I don't know if it's going to all fit. Um, over here, these are cards that they can add to their deck. These are cards they can, different kind of cards they could add to their deck. These are yet a third kind of card that they can add to their deck. Um, they have different names, advanced tactics, I think. I don't know, spells artifacts. These are wounds. If you get hurt, these get added to your deck. So, you know, if you draw a hand of cards and you have a lot of wounds in it, you're going to have fewer options. And that's kind of what that is. An experience track. 
you know, you get different powers as you go up in level. Reputation, if you have a higher reputation, it's easier to get people to join you. Um, you lose reputation by taking things. What else? I think I just explained Mage Knight. Now you know how to play. Um, there's skill things. They can get skills as they make levels. And their armor goes up as they make levels. They can get cards added, you know, make levels. Uh, these are cities. These are ruins. This is Star Masters. Star Masters.